And the first, the, the, after that is, is just work, man. Just work. The value of hard work, that there is no replacement. Now we, we again, I, you know, find ourselves in a very interesting situation where we, in, in a bit to teach our children or to, to, to make, we, we've come up to this is work smart, not hard. Uh -huh. Let your money work for you. Okay. That you work yourself out of a job. Yes, okay. Uh -huh. Create passive income that allows you to, I don't know, go and do what, where, as others do slog away on your behalf. And slowly by slowly what has happened is that we get to the place where we are now disconnecting the, 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 the bond between work and satisfaction, the bond between work and fulfilling one's purpose, and presenting work as some sort of drudgery that we must go through on a day-to-day -day basis in order to just get by. And, and in essence, and, and I think the more unfortunate thing, especially in a developing country like Kenya, is we now begin to associate work with poverty. So we're looking at the people who work the hardest, and these could be our domestic workers, they are our watchmen, they are the people who look after our cows, and who do this hard manual labor, and, and who also now happen to earn the lowest wages. And that I found was a conflict because if we allow that to get into our children, then what we do in essence, and, and, I'm, and I'm seeing this in, in a lot of the social media, I see this in the sense that people seem to want to reward laziness of sorts that you, you, you want to make it seem that you can party all the time and still make money. And <laughs> I have nothing against social media influencers. I think they, they work particularly hard. I mean, by the time you're coming up with content consistently, Oh, 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 week, week, year after year after year after year. It's, it's hard work. But you create the illusion in the followers that there's a way in which you can drink yourself or drive yourself or clothe yourself into prosperity. Yeah? And that is not true. And then the, I think the other essence was then, was the words. This, this struck me because life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I found this interesting because I grew up with the saying, I don't know about the rest of you, but sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So I grew up imagining that words can't hurt a person. But let me tell you, and I, and I say this from the bottom of my, my heart, the, 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 the things that have hurt me the most are, are words. Cruel words that have been said to me or said to others in my presence that I'll never forget. And even as a child, I remember that, that we'd have people who are not academically gifted in class. And I remember some of the cruel comments and we made about them, even as children. And, and it still haunts me to this day that we would have said such things to a human being, to a child of God. And in essence, I, I came to understood that, that you, if we don't guard our words very carefully, we stand in very great danger of actually bringing down our homes, bringing down the people we love, completely incapacitating the people who look up to us, and in essence, even talking to ourselves so negatively that it makes it impossible for us to succeed. So now that's what you, you, you come, you, you wonder then, okay, it means that now if I lay this foundation, if I get my words right, and these are the things that we, we now must be very careful, and I'm talking particularly this season because I'm hearing leaders speaking as if words have no consequence and not remembering that, that we have people who take words very seriously. And that, that worries me. But having said that, then the next step now was actually the actualization because now when you have the, 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 the foundation, is the fear of God, the righteousness, the... the the justice, and then after that you put in hard work and you, you speak properly. Then the outcomes, I found were too. The first one is wealth. Now, wealth, wealth is, is interesting because it is subjective, not objective. And I say this because I, again, I grew up in a very interesting setting. My, my, my father was a very, let me, let me say, a very frugal individual. Really, really frugal. I remember, I mean, he died and we, he had so few clothes that we, we 
it, it took a lot of memory to just go and realize that this guy this guy didn't have many clothes. He had like three shirts, two tra- pairs of trousers, a pair of shoes, two jackets, something like that, and maybe three ties. And that was it. But he he invested very very well. Now, had you looked at him and encountered him and, and met with him, you you'd never have known that this person has invested so well. And a lot of wealth, the way it presents itself, is like that. It is the true wealth, in my view, is extremely understated. I know very few millionaires, real millionaires, who would flaunt money and cash in the open like that to to to, to, to flaunt. It, I know very, very, very few who would do that. But what I know for a fact is that the wealth will be accumulated in one way or the other. And the, the thing I've learned about God is that it's, God is not a God, a God of 10 years or 20 years. God operates in decades, in millennials. So, so it's, he's fine. He's fine with accumulating over a period of time. And I know for a fact that this, following these principles will generate wealth in some way or form. And some of the wealth is in the other side, which is relationships. So there are two equal parallel places. And what I've noticed in many cases is that even when the people who, you don't make wealth in terms of money from this particular operating with these principles, you build relationships. And from my experience, again with family business, is that the relationships often, more often than not, are more valuable than any money you may accumulate. That if you leave your children healthy, godly relationships with good, godly people, your children will succeed. And I know that because I have had the opportunity to watch and to see that money by itself is not valuable to individuals. It's not. It, it doesn't work like that. Money combined with relationships sets children far, far ahead. And I've seen, I've seen that in family businesses where the, the, the heirs, the fathers and the mothers are very deliberate about connecting their children to their relationships, plugging them into their networks, and that opened doors for them. And because of that, they now assisted with the essence elements of money, pushed those children along a great distance. And I want to, I dare say that the relationships by themselves, just the opening of doors for your children and for your, the people who depend on you, opening those doors that they may go through itself is more important than the actual money and the cash and the assets that you give them. Because those relationships have the potential to outlast any property that you live in. So in my view then, I, in my, my, my argument, in my dissertation is that if you get that right, if you come to the fear of God, the second pillar is the righteousness and justice. The third, or the th- third layer, the, 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 yes, the third layer is the words and hard work, work, and then the fourth layer is the relationships and wealth. If you combine all those things, at the end, you get to the place of shalom. Now, we've encountered shalom as a shalom of, a, of, of salvation, which is very good because that's a shalom that we seek for, that Jesus gives us and gives us the assurance of, that when shalom is a place, you, you will get to shalom, you get to the place of peace when we are reconciled to God, which is one. But then, this is what I discovered again, the benefit of reading. And again, I encourage us to <laughs> attend ILU International Leadership University for courses at various levels, the, because then you discover that there's a shalom of management, which I didn't know about. That there's a way you can manage your life, your financial life, your family life, your social life. It's a way you can so well manage it. That in so doing, you provide shalom now from the management of those relationships and it becomes a benefit to everyone. What does that mean? It means that if I actualize these principles, and get to shalom. Shalom will mean that my watchmen, where they are, where I am, are happy individuals. They are cared for. Everybody within my household, the people I work with, the people I work for, the people who invest in me, that we've delivered that the peaceful relationships, one balanced with the other. That's that 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 shalom. That the essence of of <laughs> vibrant, productive relationships are enhanced. Even if I I aspire obviously to, to, to grow in wealth that I may be generous, that you create that environment. But what I found is this, that the connection between that, the fear of God, the pillars with righteousness, justice, we spoke about wealth, we spoke about wealth, we spoke about wealth and relationships, all the way to Shalom, the connecting pillar there is wisdom. And for me, that's what I realized, that the, the way to get from that point, the way to navigate in my life, 
is to seek wisdom. And I'm encouraged that if we do that, you know, God, God is interesting because he says, if you feel like you lack wisdom, the book of James tells us that if you lack wisdom, go to God. And he who gives it without finding fault will grant those requests of yours. So thank you very much. I'm honored. I wish you well. I pray that you will be a blessing. You'll be, you'll be blessed through this word and that in, in, you'll be encouraged to join Elnet and the various forums that it has because they will enhance your ability to operate. And again, I encourage you, come, study. Leadership, study. Come and study. Come and add to the knowledge that you have in a rigorous academic setting that is at ILU, International Leadership University. Feel free to inquire and we can get you to those places where you have a deep, intimate knowledge of God and that we are able to exercise his word and put it into practice. God bless you all.